morning, good day, good day. Hola. Today is Air Day here at uh, Being Festival, so we're going to celebrate the direction of the north and air this morning. We usually start by welcoming the different directions and the elements into our bodies and acknowledging them. So let's do that now. Let's turn. Actually, this morning we'll start facing east towards the rising sun. We welcome into the east the sun into, into our bodies, into all our cells, drinking it in, the destination of the joy child, that spark, that eternal flame within us. So with each breath, let's drink in that beautiful fire energy of the sun. Creativity, inspiration, <coughs> sensuality. And then turn to the south. The place of waters and this beautiful lake. The trust child. Tides that ebb and flow within us. The tides of the moon drawing us up and down, in and out of all our emotions. And we welcome it and breathe the liquid coolness, the purification of water. In. mountain peaks and the winds that blow us clear to the place of intellect, heart-mind, body-mind, head-mind. turn now to each other, welcoming the human family amongst us, acknowledging each other, saying good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're here again in these beautiful bodies, beautiful place. And also welcoming the ancestors because whenever ceremony and story and song and people gather, the ancestors draw close to us because they love to hear what we're doing. In our lives with air, it begins with our first breath as we come out of our mother's bodies. It's our first step towards individuality, towards independence, as we make the break from being wholly independent with our mothers. And it's that breath that we hardly notice most of the day, it's so automatic, that keeps us alive on this earth. This air, this air that we share with everything 
thing on this planet and which retains the memory of everybody who's gone before and their final breath, if not each of their breaths before. So this is ancestral breath. All knowledge, all knowing from before is somewhere in this air, uh, sacred breath. So what I'd like to do this morning is to just become, to begin with, is to come into our breath in a very deep way. So we can start, you can remain sitting if you like, or if you want to stand, then that's fine too. But I want to start by breathing deeply, just three deep breaths, growing more aware of the dynamics in the body of what happens with you. Just notice it. And deepen it from your chest into your belly. set of breaths, I want you to take it from your sex, from your sacred yoni, your sacred part, in through there and up to your base, to your sacral, to your sacral chakra in your intestinal area. Three deep breaths. solar plexus, so into your deep belly, pull it up, and now take a breath into your solar plexus, into your point of balance and draw it up the green, oak green sun of your heart. sun of your throat. <clears throat> and with the next breath, draw it in from your throat and send it up to the violet sun wheel at your third eye. Next breath, draw it in through your third eye and out into the beautiful sun wheel in the crown of your head. With the next breath, deep breaths, draw in universal grace and light, the universe 
in through your crown chakra and send it down through your whole body until it's all energized. And then breathe out all that serve, doesn't serve you anymore. Anything that doesn't serve you, breathe it out. Breathing in universal breath and grace. Breathing out that no longer serves. Now, believe it or not, it's not just through our nose and mouth that we breathe. Our skin breathes. Every pore of our skin breathes. So now draw in that universal grace through each pore in your skin. Just absorb it. And expel that which you don't need. With the next breath, take a deep breath in and hold it when your lungs and your body is filled to capacity. Feel full of that breath. And then release it. And release it emptying utterly and hold the emptiness. breath back in. And hold it full. And expel it utterly. <sighs> and allow it air back into your lungs, into your body. Hold it full again. This time when you expel it, do it in guffs. <coughs> and suck it in in the same way. And out again. just settle with your breath. Just allow it to settle until you almost don't notice it again. How your body feels after that deep breathing. Ancestors in Europe, especially in the Bronze Age, they would take their most important, their most valued, their wisest, perhaps, their most powerful, perhaps, people, and they would take them to the top 
of the mountains to the high places and they would bury them beneath piles of rock so that their souls could be blown free with the wind. The high places have always been sacred to air, places where the spirit can expand and also sacred to the ancestors. The ancestors are close at those thin places. So what I'd like us to do now is to do an air meditation as we've done for fire and for earth yesterday. So settle again with your breath. And those that were here yesterday and the day before, you'll know what I mean when I say find yourself in your nematon. For those of you who weren't, just find yourself in your meditative eye, in a special place, a place that you feel safe in, a place of beauty that you can return to and leave from. And just settle there for a minute. Once you feel settled and nurtured in this safe, beautiful place, find your attention drawn to a place over your shoulder, over your right shoulder. And you'll find that there's a rock face there that you never saw before. And you're going to climb that rock face, but your body is so easy, so feather-like, that it's almost as if you can run up this sheer rock face until you get to a high place, a high ledge right at the top. And just sit there. strong enough and big enough to carry you on its wings. And when it's, you see it rise to meet you, stand and take a leap off that precipice into the air and land on its wings and let it take you to the highest peak. Enjoy the feeling of wind in your hair, the speed of air all about you as you fly.
bird companion will leave you now, but he'll be back. You don't need to worry. He's going to leave you, just you, on the top of this mountain with air, wind blowing around you. Just sit there a moment. You may see them, you may just feel their presence. It doesn't matter. Now turn your face into the wind on your mountain top and ask air, what can I learn from? The next question is, what can I do for you? What can I do for air? Is there anything?
never feels as if there's enough time with your ancestors. But you can always return to this place now that you know the way. But for now, it's time to call your bird companion back. To bring you from your mountain top. the air onto its wings and ask it to take you back to your nematon, to your safe space, your safe place. Begin to come back to this realm. Begin to take in some deep breaths. Smell the incense in the air. Come back into your body. Feel the earth beneath you solid. and breath. It's also the element of scent. So I've been burning some, some lovely incense and sound. There's also in the um, in tarot, it's represented by swords. It talks about intellect. It's the, kind of the cutting sharpness of intellect, of mind and of intention. So setting intentions is a good thing when you're working with air. But mind isn't only about head mind. We have, the ancients believe that we have many minds, including body mind as its own intelligence, and heart mind. And traditionally, the way of the peaceful warrior is to be led by the heart mind. So that's what I would like us to look at in this next story, an old, old wisdom text. In Wales, where I come from, we, um, the Celts invaded, well, they kind of didn't so much invade, but they came and they joined us through um, trade, bit by bit, gradually, until they integrated with the old, dark, Neolithic people who have been there since uh, the, the end of the last uh, ice age. And the Celts, they didn't have uh, kings. The head of the tribe was always the queen. Sorry, Jen. The, the women also fought, but the head of the household, the head of the, the, the household, the head of the uh, the tribe was a woman because the bloodline was counted through a woman. You can only actually ever really know your bloodline through the woman. Um, 
in most families scratch back six or seven generations then there will be somebody whose father isn't really their father. <laughs> it's just the way of things. The mother line is short. So up in, in, in Wales there's, there's a place called Tarn Vadrin. It's a hill fort, a beautiful hill fort close to the, to the air. It's a very airy place. And Madrin was the queen of that fort. And she had three daughters and it was coming to the time that she was growing old and she knew that she needed to decide who the next queen of the tribe would be. And so they didn't do it by feet of arms or by who is the bravest. What Madrin in her wisdom decided to do was to gather her daughters together, her three daughters at full moon. And she gave them each a purse of gold and she said, my daughters, my time on this earth is ending and before long the tribe will need a new leader. I want you to go out into the world for a full moon cycle. From this full moon and be back here at the next full moon. And with these purses of gold, I want you to go out and bring back the greatest beauty, the most beautiful thing that you can. So the eldest daughter, she was very in her head mind, she thought hard about what that beauty would be and she knew that her mother, as most of the Celts, liked gold and jewels and so she decided to go to make the, the finest uh, talk that she could for her mother and the, the most amazing uh, silversmith and goldsmith at the time was a magic smith called Wayland and he lived quite a way away so she kind of started off that very day the next day the next morning she made her way all the way down to the chalk hills where the, 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 the hills are marked with chalk horses and there there's a smithy Wayland Smith and she went in and she said Wayland you are the most magical of all the smiths of Britain I have a purse of gold I need you to make for my mother, Madrin, the most beautiful talk that you could ever make. These talks were kind of quite thick golden things with terminals. And they counted them <coughs> for, for wealth and for status. And Wayland took the gold and he made the most exquisite talk ever. And he wound spirals into it and all sorts of patterns from nature till it was glorious absolutely glorious and towards the middle of the month the eldest daughter she started her way back to gather Madri. Now the middle daughter, the middle daughter was a dancer. She loved to dance, she loved nature, she loved activity. She was very much in her body and she decided that she knew her mother liked things from nature. What's the most beautiful thing from nature we can think of? Flowers. Flowers, yes, she could go out and pick flowers. It was something else. She knew she needed to, to think about something a bit more extraordinary than that. What crystals. else is there? Pardon? Crystals. Crystals, yeah. Beautiful crystals from the rock. It's a really good idea. That's not what she went for. <laughs> what else is there? Wood carvings. Wood carvings. There's some beautiful wood carvings in Wales. But no, that's not what she went for. <coughs> what she went for is a dragon's egg. Now you've all seen a dragon's egg, yeah? No, what no. is it? A dragon's egg. The egg of a dragon. The egg, egg of a dragon. Egg. You haven't seen an egg of a dragon, now you poor things. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what an egg of a dragon looks like. It's about this big, depending on the size of the dragon. And it's beautiful moonlit white, but inside it are all the lights of the rainbow and it comes out through it, a bit like an opal. Have you seen an opal? It's got all those facets. Well, the dragon's egg is like a huge Open. It just so happens that the middle daughter knew where to get a dragon's egg because not very far from the fort is a mystical hill called Dinas Embris and in there sleep dragons. And so she left that morning, the morning after uh, her mother had given her the, the bag of gold, she made her way and she gave coins to the wise people around that place who told her the secret of how to get into the dragon she made her way into the dragon cave and there 
was this amazing red dragon sleeping. Its flanks heaving. Face there. She could see as it breathed the scales on its body shift. Its gills shift. Its nostrils broaden and narrow. She had to be very quiet. She could see that under its wing there were three eggs. She knew she could take one. So very skillfully and silently, in her, with her mind, the intelligence of her body, she made her, her way in very, very quietly. And every now and again, the dragon's eyelids would She would stay still and then move again until she had an egg. She came out and made her way out of the cave and gradually back to her mother's fortress. And then there was the youngest daughter. Now the youngest daughter had no idea what to get her mother. What was the most beautiful thing in the world? She had absolutely no idea. So that morning she left feeling a bit despondent. You know, I can't think of anything. And she wondered for a whole moon cycle. She wondered here and there. And every now and again, she'd come across an old man begging at the side of the road. And she couldn't pass him, so she'd take a gold coin and she'd. And then she'd wonder a bit more and she'd find destitute children. And she'd say, come with me, come with me. And she'd take them to the next village and she'd give gold coins to a childless couple and say, would you look after these children? She said, well, here's a few more gold coins to look after them until they're grown. And then she'd walk again and she'd see old people and people in need and starving people until she didn't have any money left. She didn't have any gold coin left and she didn't have anything to show for it. And so she wandered back, as the moon was turning almost to full, she wandered back to Kad Madrin. And the next day when the moon was full, Madrin gathered her daughters and the whole village up there in the great round house at Kad Madrin. She said, now my daughters, what beauty have you brought me? And the eldest daughter proudly came forward with this beautiful box and with a flourish she opened the box with this beautiful talk in it and her mother said oh my daughter you've done really well that's the most beautiful talk I've ever ever seen thank you you've done really well and the eldest daughter feeling proud as punch she sat down and sipped some mead and then it was the middle daughter's turn and undaunted by what she'd seen her elder sister do she brought a bag with the dragon's egg in it. And with a flourish, she dropped the bag. And there was this glowing, beautiful dragon's egg. And her mother went, oh, my daughter, that's the most beautiful thing. A dragon's egg, I have rarely seen one. It's for me. That's the most beautiful thing I have seen in nature. And she put it on the table. And she went back to her seat and feeling proud as punch, she drank a little ale. And now the youngest daughter was skulking in the back thinking, oh no, this is going to be so embarrassing. I have nothing to show. And her mother said, my daughter, what have you brought me? And she kind of skulked forward and she hung her head and she said in a low voice, I'm sorry, mother, I didn't find anything I spent on. And I've got nothing to show for it. And Madrin, wise Madrin, she said, My daughter, for a few days after you left here, people have come here and told me of your kindness and generosity and how you have helped them and how you have changed their life around and how you have been thoughtful. And that is the greatest beauty. And you will be queen. And in time she was. And she was a great queen. Thanks to the use of 
following her heart mind, the body mind, or the head mind. Mm. So you're not going to get off without learning a song. <laughs> So it's time, time to stand up now. You're welcome. Thank you. Every morning they're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> more stories, more stories. I <laughs> love stories. Mm. So this was a breath song. And it goes like this. Mm. Breathing out, breathing in. Breathing out, breathing in. I am solid as the mountain. Mother Earth, and I am free. Okay, so we'll learn it together. Bre breathing out and breathing in thing is repeated, <coughs> so that's quite easy. So, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in. Again, <coughs> breathing out. Solid as the mountain. Okay. I, am I am solid as the mountain. I am deep as Mother Earth. Just do it again. I am deep as Mother Earth. And I am free. And I am free. Let's try putting it together. Breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in. I am solid as the mountains, I am deep as Mother Earth, and I am free. Again, breathing out. Last time, big voice. Breathing out, breathing in. Breathing out, breathing in. I am solid as the mountains. I am deep as Mother Earth. I am free. Deep blessings of air be with you all this day. Be aware of it every now and again. Check in with it throughout the day as you walk this beautiful landscape. Blessings of the high places and the ancestors be with you as you plant your feet on the ground and put your intention up there with the spirits of air.